Hello and welcome to another Rant Rave Review. Today will be a short little video uh, discussing some true crime. It's going to be short because A, I'm going to try to write later. Oh, exciting. And B, I don't have too much to say about this one. And also my lighting is bad. If you can see, there's this big dark area on my face. I don't use <laughs> fancy YouTube lighting. I literally just turn on all the lights in my living room. Uh, and... One of my bulbs is burned out in my overhead light, so hey, if it seems a little dark, that's why. I'm using the ambient light from the window over there to try to not be as dark. Anywho, uh, so what am I discussing? Homicide Hunter, Lieutenant Joe Kenda. If you don't know who that is, uh, or maybe you have heard of him, he he's of ID Channel fame. He was on the ID Channel. He looks like this. Uh, he, he's this uh, Lieutenant... From Colorado Springs, he solved almost 400 homicides over his career. He was on the ID channel, and he has this, like, hard-boiled type delivery. His turns of phrase, his tone of voice. He's like a hard-boiled detective, but in real life. And it's excellent. And these are two books where you... There's two books. You have two books. You absolutely need to get the audiobook. Even if usually you don't like audiobooks, I'm like, but he reads them. He's the narrator. You gotta. It's so good. Like, 10 out of 10. Uh, again, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not into audiobooks, just watch the show Homicide Hunter. But if you like audiobooks, do, do read these. He wrote two. His first one was called I Will Find You. And his second one, which came out this year, is called Killer Triggers, Murder Comes Down to Sex, Drugs, and Money. So I'm going to review this one first, and then the first one last. Yes. This one, I will say... You don't need, need, need to buy it because it pretty much rehashes a bunch of his cases from the show, but it adds a little bit of extra stuff. Uh, he discusses this adorable encounter, not encounter, this story about like a retired police dog and his wife and stuff. Uh, Joe Kenda's wife, not the dog's wife. But this one's really about basically looking at what causes different people to murder because his big thing in the show is most murders are basically sex, money, revenge, rage like the basic things it's very rare to have an actual like thrill killer or serial killer type who's in it for like power and stuff usually it's like these two you know druggies had a falling out over some money and they kill each other over 45 dollars that happened uh you know this guy's jealous of his wife so he kills the guy and you know like basic things uh that doesn't mean that it's boring i have this i wrote a blog about villain motivation and how I feel like writers often act like you need to have a really unique motivation to have a good villain, but it's like, no, you can have a normal motivation and have a unique story based on, like, how did you solve the crime? Maybe there's some weird things in the crime, red herrings, etc. Yeah. Uh, and again, in real life, these are real cases he solved. These ones weren't as bizarre, but in the show, there were some where you're like, what the heck? Like, they're so twisty tony. They're like an actual crap. Oh my gosh. Yes, okay. I'll wait till the second book to talk about that. <laughs> There's some really cool stuff. But yeah, Killer Trigger is pretty good. Not a must-have. Because again, if you've seen the show, you've heard all the cases before. I Will Find You. I really like. It has a lot of stuff that's not in the show. And some stuff that could not be in the show. Uh... <laughs> Because the show was on at like 7 at night on television and the book, like, th th these people have seen some stuff. I will say what I like about both books is he talks about having PTSD from seeing all the stuff that he's seen. And I wish that more people would bring that up with police. Like, I feel like our society is very understanding of soldiers who have PTSD. Because, you know, you go into the situation, you get shot at, there's all this violence, etc. I mean, you come home and you're like, uh, uh. not all soldiers have PTSD, but many do. Police officers, granted they're not usually being shot at, although some are, and you often have to be on your guard as a police officer. Um, oh, I should talk about. Oh, we're going to have a special bonus end of the month get caught reading thing that I just decided. Get caught reading. Yeah. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> about police officers. But... People like homicide detectives constantly have to deal with violence, like, nonstop. Not being shot at, per se, but seeing what other people have done to the other people. They get to see dead bodies, children, um, horrible things. Things that, like, 
you wouldn't think another human being would do to another human being. Like that kind of like, oh my gosh. Um, yeah. And they just have to deal with that. And even if you're not a homicide detective, many police, like they're like first responders where it's like, you know, oh, we had a domestic violence call. And you're like, you're walking in. You don't know if the person has a gun. You don't know if he already killed his wife. Like what's going to happen? Or welfare checks where you go to a house and it might be like a, an old person who like passed away, but now like you see their body like moldering. Yeah. So let's just say that police, in general, police encounter people on the worst day of their life. Sometimes they also encounter like extreme violence or like sad things. So a lot of people, police officers have PTSD and I really wish society would be more understanding of that. End of PSA. <clears throat> anyway, so I Will Find You is quite good. I will say warnings for content, sexual and violent. Um, there's, oh, oh, there's so many things like they couldn't put on TV. There's a whole part where he talks about, um, oh, people who died from autoerotic asphyxiation, which is so like depressing. Like it's one of the most depressing things I've ever heard in a book. I was like, oh, oh, like that's just awful. Um, he discusses suicide. He discusses seeing little kids who are killed. And some of it, it's in the show. Like, you know, he mentions this happened, but then in the book he talks about like the details and you're like, oh, oh. Um, one episode in the show, he basically lays out the facts. There was this woman and her little boy who were murdered by, I think it was, I want to say it was a janitor in their building who had the key. He got in, murdered them both, caught red hand, not red handed, but I mean, they knew it was him. Like there couldn't have been anybody else. There's fingerprints, everything. They knew it was him. But between him being arrested and him going to trial, he was like, oh, I converted to Christianity and I got born again. And I'm, yeah, which is like, okay, fair. Like I will say like as a Catholic, yes, that can happen. You can be a hideous murderer and also um, you know, then repent of it, okay? Except that him and his lawyer used this to basically be like, oh, I shouldn't go to jail for this, which is very suspicious, because I'm like, I'm sorry, if you actually, like, converted to Christianity, you'd probably understand, like, justice and, yeah. And what makes me really mad, and what made Jokanda really mad, is the jury agreed, and they did not guilty, which is insane. Because legally, they knew that he murdered the mom and the kid. He said, like, he admitted to murdering the mom and the kid. All the evidence pointed to the murder of the mom and the kid. But they're like, oh, well, he's Christian now, so, like, not guilty. And I'm like, Ex no. Like, not, not legally and not theologically. Like, it's great if your soul is saved, but you gotta do the temporal, like, punishment of that crime. Like, you murdered somebody. You should at least go to prison. At least, okay? Yeah, but he didn't at all. Didn't spend a day in prison after the initial arrest and Joe Kendo was like, livid. Like, this is not justice. And it was not justice. And then in the show, he talks about, I guess the guy moved to New York, was still a dirty criminal who kind of, hmm, didn't seem to repent too much. And he jumped, quote unquote, out of a window of a building and died on a sidewalk. And I guess the cops in New York, like, took a picture of the body and sent it to Jokenda. And Jokenda's like, whenever I'm, like, depressed and think that there isn't justice, like, justice isn't being done, I just open my desk drawer and look at that picture because of, like, somebody took justice upon themselves. And you're, like, watching the show, you're like, wow, Kenda, that's really dark. And then in the book, so in the, in the, in the book, you hear the whole story and you hear exactly what that guy did to the mom which I will not go into um it was like heinous I can't I like yeah I will not burden you all with that and you're like no Kenda fair like looking at his that fair yeah no like that guy deserved to be pushed out of a window like frankly he actually deserved to be you know put in prison for the rest of his life but since the jury decided to abdicate their responsibility to do that yeah so cosmic justice yeah um so yeah this is the kind of thing when you read books by like fbi profilers or actual cops like be prepared for the really gory details because they have seen some stuff they have seen human beings do things to other human beings that you didn't think anyone could or would do yeah so there's that but there's also like uplifting things it's really cute because um 
I, I think he only mentions this in the last episode of the show, but you know, he was a homicide detective for years and years and years, and, and he had PTSD. And then after he retired, he became a bus driver of like a special needs bus. And he was like, it was like, great, because people were finally happy to see me. And I was like, oh no. Um, but yeah, so there is some like lightheartedness and some sadness, but it's, it's very interesting. I Will Find You is a very interesting book. Um, it was funny too, because I, I want to say it came out before the show ended. Because I had read some of his book and I was like, oh, I read this in his book. Like this episode's coming out, I think. There was one, there was one case where just weird things, again, where like, this seems like a fake thing, but it happened to a real cop, where there was a family that was picnicking under a tree somewhere in Colorado Springs, where, you know, Jokenda is a cop, and the tree started raining blood on them. Yeah, and they were like, what's going on? And there was like a headless body in the tree, like bleeding out, okay? So the cops were like, what happened? What happened? How'd he get up in that tree? Like, what a mysterious X-Files-ish case. Just kidding. It was actually a guy at the top of the cliff above the tree had like shot himself, like committed suicide and just fell into the tree by accident. Like he didn't intend that. He was just, you know, a crazy guy who ended his life. But the circumstances made it seem insane. And yeah, so I don't know, just that kind of thing. A very interesting, twisty, turny, real life, bizarre crimes, real life, terrifying crimes. Uh, I feel like this book is good if you're into true crime, obviously. If you want to write mysteries or crime fiction, like, read true crime. Read this kind of thing of, like, this is the kind of thing that real cops deal with. It's really weird. Here are their feelings. Like, here's all this stuff. But you should read it. Read it if you want to understand the police. Again, like, I'm kind of a crime junkie. Police get such a bad rap. And I'm like, okay, like, most police are not criminals those police who are criminals should be prosecuted like criminals. Like that's, that's my stance. This is like my political thing about like, oh, d defund the police or not. And I'm like, no, like if there's a cop and he kills somebody and he shouldn't have, treat him like a murderer because that's what the law says to do. Like I, yeah, <laughs> I know it's crazy. A lot like Punishing criminals, it's almost like that's what the law is for. Yeah, but most police, like the vast majority, are not like that. And they just do their jobs and they try to, um, especially this one, he's a homicide detective. I've, I've heard some people say, like, we should defund the police because they don't prevent crime. And it's like, yeah, it's not their job to prevent crime. Like, I absolutely agree we should fund social services and other things that try to help society deal with structures that lead people into poverty or like other situations that then often lead to crime which isn't always the same like just because someone's poor does not mean they're going to be a criminal by the way um there's let's just say there's a lot more wrong with our society than where the money is going where funding is let's just say but yes we should fund social services etc at all that does not mean that police need to be defunded because police, like their job isn't to prevent crime. Their job is to, I mean, it is somewhat to prevent crime. Like if you have a police officer running around a neighborhood, obviously, hopefully there'll be fewer crimes. Their job is to solve crimes. Their job is to pick up the pieces when somebody, um, for example, like I, there was one night where I was at home alone and it was like 10 o'clock at night and someone like banged on my door and I was, and I have security doors. Like I read a lot of true crime. So yeah, I have like a security system and security doors, etc. But I was like freaked out. I called the cops and I was like, yeah, can you just come over and like, you know, make sure that everything's okay. Um, they did. They were there like super fast. We have a small town. So yeah. Um, but just to make sure that like there's not some wacko outside who's gonna like break a window and try to murder me. Okay. Um, yeah. And again, like obvious, there's oh, this other statistic that made me want to kill myself. Uh, <laughs> on top of a cliff and into a pine tree. Uh, there was some statistic about like, well, police only solve like 15% of rapes and murders or something like that. And I'm like, okay and is going to defunding so let's just defund them or abolish them so that it can solve zero percent of rapes and murders like that's the thing is if you have yeah you can you, they're not going to solve everything a they literally can't b um often they might even know who did it but they can't get the evidence and we live in a system where you actually need evidence to convict somebody of a crime crazy i know um and three thank goodness there's someone out there 
an agency who is dedicated to solving rapes and murders. Because I would not want to live in a world where if somebody raped me, I would have to pay scientists to run the DNA and um, people to collect evidence and everything because there's not a public agency that does that. I would hate to live in a world where if someone gets murdered, well, I hope that some social services who are not trained to collect evidence and to hunt down suspects, like, have to deal with that because it's like, no, the police are there to deal with the worst cases, like the worst of the worst. Yes, they also provide some like peace officer type stuff, but especially like homicide, etc. They're there to deal with like the crimes that society is always going to have. Like you're always going to have murderers and rapists and thieves. That's human nature. Humans are kind of jerk faces. But hopefully you have someone who's there to stop it. So yeah, that's my rant rave review and extra like I don't care if people like don't like my stance on the police because the vast majority of them are doing their jobs and are good people. Those who are not, and again, like, um, I would say my, my advice is any news story about a police officer doing something nowadays, watch the video. Watch the police cam footage and make your own decisions. Um, there have been many things where you know, I, he I heard the initial, I, you know, people say, this is what happened. And I watched the video, I was like, that's not what happened at all. Like, that cop is innocent or did the right thing. Or I watched the video and I'm like, wow, that cop is 100% wrong. Like, throw the book at him. If a policeman acts like a criminal, treat him like a criminal. If a policeman acts like a decent human being and citizen and or is also defending himself or others, which is, you know, a thing, treat him like a decent human being who is defending himself and others justice, which is what we're all supposed to care about, justice means treating each person, giving each person what they deserve. And that's what the police should do. So obviously, if they confront a person, and they do not know for sure that this person is a criminal, you have to treat them as not a criminal. If they know the person is a criminal, you can treat them as a criminal. If a person suddenly pulls a weapon, you treat them like somebody with a weapon, and the situation will tell you whether or not they're probably going to shoot you or not, or stab you or not, or depending on the weapon, of course, you know? Um, yeah. But let's just say that watch the videos, watch the police cam footage, make your own decisions, believe your own eyes. If you read a news story and it sounds really bad, because there's some that sound really bad, even if the videos are horrible, um, oh, I'll just say, if you can find the, oh, I forgot that kid's name, the 14-year-old kid who got shot. That's an example of, like, a tragedy on all levels. Um, it's hard to watch. You can literally see him, like, die on screen. Like, it's, it's extremely hard to watch, but you need to watch it before you make a decision on who was wrong and who was right. Um, the kid and the cop both deserve it. Like, if you're going to have an opinion. You don't have to have an opinion. If you want to just be like, I don't know, I'm not going to watch it, I don't want to, you know, subject myself to that, fine. But if you're going to say, you know, I think this person or that person is a victim or a perpetrator, you kind of owe it to them to watch the video and make your own decisions rather than believe what other people have told you. Uh, yeah. And again, back to the PTSD thing, is like, if, if cops can put their lives on the line and their psyches... Not all of them put their lives on the line. A lot of forensic people, they just look at dead bodies. They're not going to get shot at. But if they're willing to put their psyches on the line for you and and have dreams of, like, dead bodies and rivers of blood and such, which Joe Kenda does, the least you can do is watch some videos and try to see the truth. Like, and because the truth... If you don't know what the truth is, then you can't know what justice is. And that's what juries are supposed to do. This video was a lot longer than I expected. It turned into an actual proper rant and rave. Um, it just bothers me because as somebody who, again, I read and I watch a lot of true crime. And the things that police have to deal with are a lot more complicated than what anybody, you or me, has to deal with on a daily basis. Um, and again, even with social workers where many social workers have to deal with horrible things as well, 
but they're not usually asked, you know, they're, they're, they're asked to usually, um, d deal with different things. Cops are basically told, you know, if there's someone who you think is going to kill somebody, you don't send in a social worker. You might send a, a cop and a social worker, like, you know, maybe try to talk that person down. If somebody's already dead and bleeding, you can send in nurses and paramedics and a cop. Like, that's the thing is, is you, you need both. You need both. You can't just say, oh, we don't need anybody to deal with the, the real criminals and the real hard stuff. Somebody has to, and the cops are the ones taking that upon themselves. So that was my really, really long, probably very incoherent rant. Um, I'll probably get canceled by many people. Hey, but hey, that's life. I support police who do their jobs. So I support the police. If you're not doing your job, you should not be a policeman. You should get the ax in multiple ways. So yeah, um, that's my stance. Go read Lieutenant Jokenda. Watch the body cam footage and uh, see you next time. We'll have a much cheerier talk. We will be discussing more classic mysteries. And then at the end of the month, I'll give you a bonus fun video. Um, yeah, I know this was late. I was supposed to have an earlier video in the middle of the month, and I think I, like, slacked off, but I think at the very end of the month, I'll give you a bonus weird rant rave review video of not a book, not a TV show, not anything, but it's about police and crime, so bye!